Okay, today we're going to be recovering a damaged file system in Linux. And, you know, say something happened and our file system became corrupt, our nodes. Sorry about the movement there again. I'm um, having to hold a camera and kind of type with one hand. So, what we would want to do first, um, let's go ahead and mount the file system. And then I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. And I just want to see. Um, now, if you built the system, you probably know what's in it, but if you're working on someone else's and you haven't, and you, know, you don't have it a part where you can kind of get to everything, quick thing, if you can mount the drive, then what you can do is the sudo fdisk-l command, and that'll list all of the physical partitions on the drive. And again, look, if you can see, I have six partitions. Now, when it starts numbering at zero, so partition one is zero, and partition 6 down there, SDA 6, would actually be listed as 5. Look at the file system types. If you look, my first partition is NTFS. That's my XP partition. My next partition is NTFS. That's my Vista partition. My third partition is NTFS. That's my data partition. These are three primary partitions. The fourth partition is an extended DOS partition with logical DOS drives. And in this case, I have an 82, Type 82 Linux swap partition and a Type 83 EXT2 Linux system partition. Okay. And again, that's SDA6. So, what I want to do, what's important is that I remember that SDA6 is where my system partition is. Now, the way that works, again, 6, that means it's, you know, that would be labeled as 5, but it's, it's the 6th partition on the system. SDA, it's a serial ATA drive. Now, if it were an IDE drive or EID, it would be HD0, HD1, or excuse me, HDA, HDB. Um, in this case with a serial ATA, my first physical drive would be STA, my next physical drive would be SDB, and so forth. And then it would be suffixed with the partition, so right after that, first physical drive SDA 6 would be partition 6. Not st I just want to remember that, because I have to pass that in as an argument or parameter to my FSCK command. Okay, I'm going to hit clear. Now, in this case, you don't want to run FCK on a mounted drive. That's a no-no. So I want to go ahead and unmount devfda6, and I can use the sudo umount command, but I can also, you know, Ubuntu makes it nice and convenient, and the folder that it would be would be in media disk, and I can unmount it that way, and well, we'll just do it, or I could just simply right click here, if you look, and I could say unmount volume, but we'll do it the command prompt way for you for you text people out, you know, you text Nazis out there who love that. Notice that the icon disappears, the drive is unmounted. And were I to issue FDisk again, now you can see, okay, yes, I have that physical drive, but if I use a mount command, it's not mounted. So we, we have the information that we need. Um, now, again, if the drive were severely damaged, you wouldn't, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to mount the drive, wouldn't be able to look at it. But you would still be able to use sudo fdisk. And in this case, even though the drive's not mounted, see, there's my serial ATA drive. So now I know what I need to pass it to FSCK. FSCK is a file system tool. It's a lot like check disk or scan disk in Windows, depending on whether you're using 2000 XP Vista or 9598. Who still uses that? There may be a few people out there. So we want to run FSCK. And I'm going to use the sudo command and FSCK. There are two important options. Um, we want to use the dash F to force it to check the, the file system. Because there's nothing wrong with my file system, honestly. I, I, you know, I don't have catastrophic failure, but we're trying to simulate catastrophic failure. So we're going to force it, but you, you know, may not have to use it. And I'm going to use the dash Y option. That's a very useful option. If you don't use this, it's going to prompt you every single time it finds a problem and ask, do you want to fix this? Do you want to repair this? That could be thousands upon thousands of times. And, you know, if you're being super careful and you want to be very careful about what you do, then sure, that, you know, you don't just go ahead and don't use the dash Y option and that way it'll only do what you tell it to. But most of the time you don't have time to sit there for hours saying yes to every little thing that FSCK will ask you. So if it's a badly corrupted file system, it could be, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of innards and entries that it has to correct. So that's a very useful option. So, you know, the dash Y option. And then I just want to go ahead and pass it the device file. So it's going to be the device and SDA6. 
that's my system partition. Now, remember man pages, if you were in doubt or you wanted to see some of the, you know, the false system options under FSCK, you could just type in man space FSCK and it would give you a list of all the switches and things that you could pass to it. But I'm going to go ahead and it's going to go ahead and check my file system. Looks a lot like scan disk and pretty much does the same thing. Um, you know, I have yet to encounter a problem that FSCK or E2 FSCK, it's EXT2, EXT3 counterpart, can't handle. Notice that me running FSCK calls E2 FSCK. Okay, now you can see pass 2 is checking the directory structure. It's finished checking the inids, blocks, and sizes. Okay, and now it's completed or finished the job and gone through pass 5. Everything's okay. Everything checks out okay. If there were any, you know, damaged files or inids, it would have told us as it went through and repaired them. In this case, I'm 7% non-contiguous, so I'm not too badly fragmented there. But, you know, again, you have the capability of defragmenting a Linux system as you do Windows. So, it's a very useful tool. Um, again, I, I have yet to get into a problem that um, I, I can't get out of, you know, using a combination of FSCK and its command line options, or E2FSCK. If you want to see those options, just pull up the man page. Remember that for any command, typically in Linux uh, or Unix, you can pull up a man page, short for manual, and get a listing of all the, the switches and options available with that command. And all of this runs right off that live CD, so you don't have to install anything. It j just makes a wonderful toolkit for fixing and repairing the file system. And then once I got the file system up, if I wanted, I, I could copy important data files off onto a removable drive, or you know, I could even burn them. Let me go up here and notice off the uh, inherent within the live CD, there's a CD DVD creator software. So even if I couldn't mount my partition, I have CD burning and DVD burning capability, so I could even burn important data files onto a DVD before I rebooted. Very nice recovery options for a Linux, you know, system. Ubuntu, Suzy, Fedora. Um. Okay, thank you very much. This concludes this little excerpt.